and welcome to Gen Friends. I'm Sherry Hudson Passy from Carolina Girl Genealogy, and as usual, we've got a great guest and a great panel. So I'm going to start introducing the panel. And first, we've got Bernice Bennett from Benny G. Hello. I said it backwards. <laughs> Jeannie Beers. <laughs> We're not starting off well, are we? How are you doing, Bernice? Hi. Hi. Good. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Keep me straight, okay? We've got Laura Hedgecock from Treasure Chest of Memories. Hey, Laura. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I just realized I need to change my name here on the little box I have. So oh, you're, oh, she's evaluating. <laughs> that was for that's Toastmasters. <laughs> that's, that's just fine. We've got Melissa Barker, the archive lady. Hey, Melissa. Hello, hello. Glad to be here tonight. I'm so glad you're here. And Shelly Murphy fam from Family Tree Girls here. Hey, Shelly. Hey, good evening, everyone. So glad you're here. Trying out your green screen. That's kind of given her fits trying. tonight. It's, <laughs> it's giving not her working, fits. but so she's pretty green. <laughs> <laughs> if she disappears, you'll know why. She's trying to get this all figured out. We've got Dan Earl, our family history guy. Hey, Dan. Hello. So glad you're here too. And sorry, Mary, last but not least, you're just down at the bottom of my screen. <laughs> Mary Kircher Roddy from MKR Genealogy. Hey, Mary. Oh, you're muted, I think. I think you're muted. While you're working on that, I will go. <laughs> I go now I, now I'm oh, here, not I muted. Sit, there you I are. Sit, I sit on mine all the time and start talking, <laughs> and people have to tell me I'm muted. And oh, I am so excited about our special guest. We have got Joe McGill. He is from the Slave Dwelling Project, and I am a big fan, and it is on my bucket list. I'm going to do one of these sleepovers one of these days. It just has to fit, you know, without the rain and social distancing and, and all those kind of things. So welcome, Joe. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. So Thanks glad. for the invitation. You are so welcome. Now, I haven't been to Magnolia to see, see your presentation, but I have been to Charleston to see you talk, and I saw you at Hobcaw Barony um, speaking out there by the, the slave um, cabins out there. So very, very educational, very informative. And why don't you get us started by telling everybody what is the Slave Dwelling Project and how did you, how did you come up with this idea? How did this all get started? The Slave Dwelling Project is a very simple concept. I find slave dwellings wherever they are in these United States. And I ask the stewards if I could spend the night in these spaces. The intent is to bring attention to these spaces because once upon a time, one could go to a historical site, a plantation, and see the nice, beautiful, big house and uh, learn mm -hmm. about its, its uh, significance, go inside and look at the place settings and the nice wooden floors and the beautiful staircase that gives you access to the upper levels. But what was missing from that story was the story of the people who physically built that home, you know, who cut down the trees that frames that home, who made the bricks mm -hmm. that's now that home, whose labor was stolen for that home to exist. So um, working at the time for the National Trust for Historic Preservation and knowing that there are preservationists out there that care, care about buildings, mm -hmm. uh, also being a Civil War reenactor with the opportunity to go to uh, Civil War battlefields and, and engage in uh, battle or reenact battles that took place on those fields, but having the opportunity to spend the night at these spaces also, uh, you know, brought all this together, all this thing that is now known as the Slave Dwelling Project. And of course, me having the DNA that I have and, and noticing that the missing element of the story was the ancestors mm -hmm. of who I derived my DNA from. Uh, all these things coming together at the right time, uh, it, it manifested in itself in this crazy idea of sleeping inside these cabins. Mm -hmm. And of course, my initial intent was to stay within the boundaries of South Carolina, because that's where my <laughs> limited resources would take me. <laughs> and then I started it. And uh, it was like, uh, it was like the genie was out of the bottle, couldn't put it back in. Uh, the bell couldn't be unrung, mm -hmm. because I immediately found out that this crazy idea was a lot uh, larger than myself uh, because after the third right around the third stay the first two people to join me in a sleepover were uh, 
fellow Civil War reenactors. Mm -hmm. The second person to join me in, in one of these places was a gentleman who wrote for the Charlotte Observer when I stayed at Hopcar Barony. And um, because he was there, because he wrote about it, the national attention that that brought to it in his writing and then NPR uh, did a, a segment on it very early on in the process and it was certainly no no turning back at that time. Also uh, working for the National Trust for Historic Preservation and, and working in other states, the states of Alabama and Louisiana also gave uh, the project an opportunity to prosper because in addition to me going to those states to do the job that I was getting paid for, uh, the uh, we were looking for those places within the vicinity of where I was going to do my work and just tagging on an extra day to my journey, uh, you know, at that state and, and taking advantage of that and and, uh, and sleeping in these slave dwellings. And now, 10 years later, <laughs> we're still at it. I think it's fabulous. And you know what else I think is very, very interesting is that people assume you're only staying in the South. <laughs> yeah, that's well. You know, that's where a lot of pushback comes when I when I extend the boundaries beyond yeah. the south. Not yes. only the boundaries, but the meaning and how this uh, this institution of chattel slavery was applied throughout these United States. And and I and I I have to be patient with the people I get the pushback from because ten years ago, I my mindset was right where theirs were because I kept the institution in a box. I kept it in a uh, at a plantation in the south. Mm -hmm. It's because I started doing what, what I was doing, I had to extend my definition of, of what chattel slavery meant and how it uh, played itself out throughout these United States because, you know, just keeping it at the plantation, I was missing a very important element. And, and this coming Friday night, I will be staying in the Haywood Washington House mm -hmm. in Charleston, South Carolina. I will see that interprets urban slavery. And you can uh, go into the nice, beautiful, historic city of Charleston and, and find hundreds of slave dwellings that, you know, that, that still exist. I wasn't thinking that way 10 years ago. Right. And I certainly was not thinking uh, slavery in those northern states, you know, the place yeah. I get the most pushback from. Because when I engage in conversation about what I do, <laughs> and, I, and I talk about, I, when I talk to northerners and about northerners, uh, is where the pushback comes in the sense that they themselves want to keep slavery in the South. They want to, you know, disregard the fact that mm -hmm. prior to the revolution, you know, they, those states enslaved people also. And then there are those states that, um, you know, don't factor into being a, a, a one of the colonies, um, states like Minnesota and, and Wisconsin. You know, I've stayed in slave dwellings in, in those states. Right. You know, Joe, um, I, I use, I've got a, a genealogy uh, talk that I give, and I use part of your project and I show people. And when I tell them that you slept in some of these states, it's, they, can't, they can't believe it. And so mm -hmm. I, I think it's a real learning, a learning curve for a lot of people. We've got a couple of questions. Mary wanted to know when the project started, and that was about 10 years ago, right? Yes. And, and then she, ago. sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, 10 years ago. This is our 10th year anniversary and we were going to, hey, we were going to be big. We are big, yeah, yeah. but you know, science dictates that that we minimize. Exactly. And so that's why I'm, 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 I'm uh, that's why we, we kind of pulled back and we, we do this yeah. thing now called social distance learning. Exactly, exactly. Her second part of that question was, she wanted to know when the NPR story was. It I know, was, Mary, she wants to go find it. <laughs> I think it's August. I think it's August of, of 2010. So, but just, okay. you know, just Google NPR Slave Dwelling Project or NPR yeah. Joseph McGill pop up for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mary, Mary is, Mary is a genealogist. Man, she hears <laughs> anything and she wants to go search her it. Her ears perk up. Her yeah. ears perk up. Absolutely. <laughs> Bernice um, says at one time you had young people participating in sleepovers. And when did that start and did it continue? And then she wants us to tell, wants you to tell us about your most memorable experiences over the last 10 years. Yeah, young folks, we've got a, we got a, a series of, of opportunities for, for young people. Uh, one in particular that I, I like to talk about is the group that I've been meeting somewhere in the United States for the last five years. Um, it's a group from, uh, they are from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, it will be the, the Marquette, Marquette University High School. Uh, we've been meeting uh, somewhere last year, the last time we met, 
uh, we were at Harper's Ferry uh, chasing the footprint of John Brown. Ah. Uh, in the, the, we've gone to Holly Springs, Mississippi, stayed there, we, uh, Northern Virginia, the first time they came here to South Carolina. But very early on when the project started, I met the project leader, Chris Lease. We were at a conference together and uh, he thought, he told me about this idea, this thing that he was doing that he, he had just started uh, with where he teaches a history teacher at the school, Marquette University High School. They teach the subject, of course, during the school year and the first two weeks uh, ends out of school, first two weeks out of school, they go on the trip to actually physically go and stay at these places. Well, part of the places that they stay include includes what I do, the slave dwelling project. So he calls on me, he lets me know what the schedule is going to be. So I call my contact in those places and I, I, I make the arrangements, if you will, uh, to sleep in the slave dwellings with these students at these particular sites. So, so there's that uh, with, with, with that group. So uh, we, we had another group of students one time from Florida who called and said that they wanted the experience. It was a they were from Florida Gulf Coast University, and they talked about, um, you know, the possibility of, of wanting to do this. And of course, I con tried to convince them to come to the state of South Carolina. Well, the compromise <laughs> was, like, well, we'll do it in Alabama. Ah. I said, well, that's fine, as long as you pay to get me there and, and, and all that. So they, no problem with that. So we, I worked with that group. Uh, we had another group at... Um, Wilmington, uh, University of North Carolina, Wilmington, that we've worked with, that we've uh, uh, stayed at a place called Bellamy Mansion in, in Wilmington, North Carolina. Also, for the last few years, we've been going to, uh, there's a, one of our board members is a school principal in North Carolina. So we've been going to his school every year and taking a group uh, to Old Salem in Western Salem, North Carolina. So we're right, we, we're really tuned in with the kids and we do cater to kids when we can. Ah, that's wonderful. Um, I know Bernice, you wanted to know what his most memorable sleepovers have been, right? And you could ask that question. You can say, <laughs> not to read your yeah. questions. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, most, most memorable? It yes. was um, it was Texas. It was it was Brenham, Texas, uh, Seward Plantation. Brenham, Texas is a home of Bluebell ice cream. Uh, and, <laughs> the best uh, ice cream. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, it's good. Um, but the it's thing okay. is, I, oh, I, I went I to it. a I went to a place there called um, Seward Plantation, and the the great the the most memorable part. Of memorable part of that stay was when we were about to leave this gentleman saved the best for last because as we were about to we walked past this 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 thing that he wanted to show us and we were about to get in our car and then he he, he made he alerted us that we had just walked past an authentic auction block oh. so uh oh. me and my colleague we stood on that auction block thinking about enslaved people uh, you know, having to bear their backs as they s stood on auction blocks because, of course, they bear their backs to show that potential buyer that there are no marks on his or her back because that potential right. buyer would not want to, to buy a defined enslaved person to insert amongst his already docile and broken enslaved people. So those are the things that, you know, went through my mind mm -hmm. as I as I stood on that option block. And that's, right. uh, that's, you know, right now, probably the most memorable mm. part or, or time that I've uh, uh, experienced on this journey. Yeah, oh, that would be that would just be very powerful, a very powerful moment. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, Shelly, you wanted to ask about supporting the project. Do you want to do that? Yeah, I just wanted to know how and I know you sell t shirts or you know, the organization does. But you also seem to have, I'm going to say reenactors. I don't know what you call them, but there's other people like your team that's there and they're in the garb of the day. You know, if it's 1860s or whatever, but they're dressed up, you're typically dressed up in and something more than normal jeans and things. But, you know, on these plantations now, are they reenactors? Are they family that are supporting you or, or what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've asked about. Because it seems like you have a team that goes with you. Yeah, At least I yeah. saw them here in Virginia a couple of times you've been there. So. Yeah, they're, they are a team and, and they act as such when when necessary. Um, so, yeah, this, they're our living historians. We, 
we are called the, um, uh, we call it in, inalienable rights, living history through the eyes of the enslaved. And when the host can, um, can accommodate, if you will, uh, financially, uh, what we bring to the table will, you know, a team will travel with me. Usually, uh, uh, most commonly, I'm alone at these sites, but sometimes uh, we do the living history. And, and what that uh, consists of is uh, we will bring in the living historians. We'll do what we do normally. We'll we'll have our conversation around the campfire. We'll sleep in the in the cabin or the dwelling or the big house. Um, and then the next morning we'll get up and we'll don our period outfits and we'll do living history at these sites. We have a, we have a blacksmith, uh, Gilbert Walker from Savannah. Uh, we have, uh, we, we have a brick maker, Rodney Prelo from Charleston, South Carolina. We have a dynamic storyteller, Dontavious Williams from, uh, Edgemore, uh, uh, South Carolina. Um, if I got that correct. Uh, we've got uh, uh, another storyteller, Carolyn Evans from, from North Carolina. Uh, so we've got these, these, these different players who will come and do these demonstrations. We've got Jerome Bias, of course, uh, who's our main cook. Mm -hmm. And everything uh, revolves around what the cook does, J Jerome Bias or Nicole Moore uh, or Don Tavis, who, who, whoever is fulfilling that role. Uh, that's the nucleus of what we do. But on the periphery of all that is uh, all these other demonstrations going on. We've got these storytellers doing what the storytellers do. We've got these historians uh, doing uh, history. Uh, and we bring that team with us. And sometimes that is the program of the day. Mm -hmm. Or we can bring the same team in or our, our components thereof. And uh, we'll we will accommodate to what our uh, our hosts, you know, can afford, you know, maybe they don't, they don't want all the players or they, their budget won't allow all of us to be there, but it's kind of a pick and choose. Uh, who do you want from this team of people that uh, we can bring? And it's been quite successful. The first year we got a, a grant to do that from the South Carolina Humanities Council, but all the four years since we've been doing it, all the hosts, all the places that, that want us, you know, they take on that expense to make it happen. We've gone as far uh, west as you know Dallas Texas with the team we've gone uh, to Dorchester count, County Maryland uh, with the team uh, but mostly right around a radius of uh, you know the South Carolina North Carolina area with the with the larger teams of people that, that we travel with well I know too Joe that you allow people to come and experience that so it doesn't even doesn't have to absolutely be part of your team if you Correct. want to come <laughs> and register and want to do a sleepover you know, once things get back to normal, you can go on to the website and look and see where you're going and you can actually go experience this for yourself. And I, I think that's a wonderful way to teach people as well, because you end up with a lot of times descendants of both the enslaved and the enslaver in one sleepover. And I can't even imagine those conversations. They must be powerful, emotional, and life-changing. Yeah, uh, the sleeping part of what we do is the nucleus of what we, we, we do. There will always be that uh, mm -hmm. to the point that, you know, Friday night I'll be sleeping in a place alone, mm -hmm. you know, exercising social distance, but we'll give folks the opportunity to still engage with us through Facebook Live. But um, yeah, we do. Now the sleepover is kind of a bait and switch, if you will, <laughs> be, be, because before you can go to sleep, we have to engage in that conversation. Yes, we have to engage in that conversation about slavery and the legacy that is left on this nation. And I, and I have to imagine, I have to imagine if, if, that if we were doing that in these times, had time not times not stop, um, uh, and, and and put uh, the brakes on what we, what we have to do and the way we have to do it mm -hmm. around that campfire. I'm sure we would have been talking about uh, Mr. George Floyd. Uh, Absolutely, Mr. Mr. Arbery, mm -hmm. uh, are, are the uh, um, uh, you know her name escapes me who got shot. Brianna, mm -hmm. Brianna Taylor. Right, uh, Brianna, right. We, you know she would be a a, a part of the conversation mm -hmm. along with you know along with uh, you know weddings on plantation and interpreting right. slavery plantation all those things that are that are, are, are part of the, the discussions today we have those kinds of uh, conversations uh, around the campfire now what I find myself doing is I'm having those conversations on my Facebook page now which is yes. good which is fine. <laughs> yeah. as long as as yeah. long as people as long as it stays cordial mm -hmm. um, so we kind of we're kind of uh, adapting uh, if you will mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I would encourage people to uh, go to the Slave Dwelling uh, Facebook Project Facebook page because when Joe goes live, you can watch him walking around because, I mean, he can't, he can't, he's social distancing, virtual education because he can't have a group of people. But that hasn't stopped him. <laughs> and he is still sleeping all by himself. <laughs> Back to the basics. Go ahead. Who, did, who said somebody said something and I didn't hear? I was going to ask, does the cook cook food of the era, of the time? Yeah. Um, okay. Jerome, By Jerome By is our cook. He will research the site mm -hmm. uh, for that aspect of what happened at that site. And, and, and sometimes the, the information is abundant, sometimes not. Um, yeah. But, you know, uh, when that information does not exist, you know, we'll, we can get more creative uh, uh, on, on what we cook. Mm -hmm. But we try to keep it as uh, authentic, if you will, close to something that may have been cooked at that site as we possibly can. Right, right. And, Laura, oh, there's, sorry, some, and, and, and there's some states that uh, will allow us to share what we cook with the audience. Mm. Uh, some places we're restricted from yeah. doing that. Yeah. Well, Laura had a question about maps. Do you want to ask? I, I actually found that I was going to oh. say I thought it would have... <laughs> I wanted to know if there was a map of all the places and I actually found it on your website. It's under overnight stays. So I think that's a cool thing, but I would say I actually was um, born and raised in South Carolina, but um, recently I went to the McLeod plantation historic mm -hmm. site. And I have to say that was so refreshing and so educational. I'd been to Magnolia, I'd been to a lot of the other ones, but when they, they really explained a whole lot of the whitewashing of history that had been going on and so far as in what had been preserved in the architecture. Um, I was just wondering if there are other sites like that that are going to a, a more educational tour program versus look how pretty the place is. <laughs> and yes. I know you're affiliated with Magnolia, yes. so I'm interested in, in knowing, you know, what y'all are doing. Oh yeah, well certainly at Magnolia where I work now, I, I spend more time at Magnolia. In fact, I'm full time at, at Magnolia. Um, and and what, we're, what we're doing there, are, we're extending what we have been doing since 2009. Since 2009, we have been doing it from slavery to freedom, our cabin tour at Magnolia Plantation and Gardens. But now we're extending that story throughout. Uh, every, every tour that one will go on, uh, that element of the story will be there. You know, once upon a time, you could, you could come and, and, and go uh, you know, into the house, or you can go on a nature tour. And, and that, that nature tour may not have told you that, uh, you know, it was because of the work of the enslaved that, you know, they, this, this once rice field that they engineered mm -hmm. now holds this nature that you are uh, admiring. Uh, now you can go in the house and in addition to see that nice place setting and think about it from the aspect of the people eating off of it, uh, we want you to also think about that, that, that same piece of that artifact and think about the people who put the food on that plate and what it took, you know, for them, uh, uh, for them to do that. But above and beyond Magnolia Plantation, uh, yes, McLeod has done, is doing a beautiful job in telling that portion of the story. In fact, it's mandated that they do. Uh, and they tell the story from the bottom up. It's kind of like Whitney Plantation. Um, for those of you who are, are familiar with, with Whitney Plantation, they tell the story from the bottom up. Um, and there, and there are other, uh, organizations out there that are doing the same thing. You take your presidential sites, which, which by the way, 12 of our former presidents were slave owners, uh, but you take uh, uh, some of your presidential sites, the ones that I've interacted with, uh, Monticello and, and Montpelier, they're doing a beautiful job in incorporating, uh, they have already incorporated the, the stories of uh, Af the enslaved population of that place. Uh, and, and they, of course, had the financial backing to do it. Um, but they're doing a great job. There are other sites that I, that I work with on a continual basis. The National Park Service, I've stayed at a, a few of their sites. They're, uh, you know, they're doing a great job. You, you've got Kingsley Plantation in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, I've stayed at the Booker T. Washington site in, in Virginia. 
uh, and, and a few other National Park Service sites that are doing a beautiful job. Institutions sure. of higher learning mm -hmm. are, are, are in on the act also. The first oh. institution of higher learning that I stayed at was uh, Sweetbriar College in, in, oh, in Sweetbriar, Virginia. So yeah, there's a, they, there, are lot, there are groupings of places that are that are doing things, but they're those, these private owned places that are doing uh, beautiful jobs also. Oh, cool. Well, Mary, Mary had a question about percentage of, of the extant slave dwellings. Go ahead, Mary. Well, how many um, of the former plantations do have extant? And, and I'm, I guess I'm talking about the ones maybe in private hands, um, not necessarily the national park sites, but. Yeah, um, uh, you know, I'm 10 years into this thing and, and, and I have no clue, but, okay. but, but here's, <laughs> but, but here's, but here's what I know. Uh, in this portfolio <clears throat> of, of about 150 sites where I've actually physically stayed, um, <clears throat> there is a, there is those group and the groupings that I, that I talked about. Now in these groupings of places that I talked about, some of these places don't have uh, slave dwellings at all. And, and that's, 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 that's a very common occurrence because, you know, one of the first things that uh, go, that goes mm -hmm. uh, are the slave dwellings. And sometimes it's intentional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, intentional because, you know, that, that part of history did not want to be remembered by that person responsible for taking it off the landscape. But sometimes it's Mother Nature who does it, takes, mm -hmm. takes these places off the landscape. You, you know, they weren't made with the best material, uh, especially if they were made for the field hands. Um, but then you get those that are, uh, that are still here. And they're still here for various reasons. One reason they still might be here is because people lived in them long after slavery ended. Some transitioned into sharecroppers, shacks, uh, housing, I should say. Um, some uh, transitioned into bed and breakfast. You can you can go to a bed and breakfast that you know were sometimes former um, uh, slave dwellings. Some. Uh, the use never was discontinued. People still are living in these places today. You could find some of them as garages, mm -hmm. pool houses, storage spaces, rental spaces. But wow. uh, as far as being, you know, extant and, and original to that site that it is now, you will find that if, if the farther north that you go, you can find an abundance of slave dwellings because uh, one is the material that they were made of, out of. When you get into the state of Virginia, you see a lot that are, are, are made of field stone because if you're clearing that land uh, uh -huh. of the rocks to grow the crops that you're gonna grow on your plantation, you're not throwing those rocks away. Uh -huh. So you got a, a lot that are, are, are made of field stone that are, that are still there. They can withstand anything. Trying to get rid of that, you're real intentional. You, you got, you are, your <laughs> intentions are great of raising that part of the story because that's effort Yeah. Um, in, in time, you know. Um, so in, in, a, in a, you go further north, you will see that a, a, a lot of these places have been saved by default. Default being that, you know, sometimes you, you're saving this nice, beautiful uh, house that dates back to whatever period slavery existed in, in that state, but the enslaved people sometimes stayed in the attic or the basement. So by default, you're saving those places. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there are these, these places still exist. They're still on this earth, and we just got to kind of kind of look at these places differently. Now, one thing to realize is that when they were writing up these nice nominations for the uh, uh, historic places, the, to be in a historic place on the, on the National Register of Historic Places, these buildings weren't given that much uh, credibility. They weren't as researched as a nice, beautiful Built. If they got a term, mm -hmm. they call them dependency or, or something of that nature. They, they, they didn't even want to call them what they were because they were so afraid of that word, you know, yes. slave cabin or slave dwelling. Um, so they are out there uh, and, and you got you to gotta see, you know, what they're being used for today. Yeah. And Mary, you were saying that you have a um, plantation that's still in your family in Virginia. And so you were curious. I guess you're going to have to figure out, find out, if, and, then, and then see if you can connect Joe with it, right? Yeah. I hope you get a smile on my face. <laughs> <laughs> see? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's probably like a fifth cousin that still lives in this plantation in the yeah. um, in the house, big house. And I was there I, you know, three years ago, I think, whenever APG was in Washington D.C. And I went down to Southern Virginia, Lunenburg County, and met my cousins and got to go in the house. Yeah. Um, that's your next email then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make it make it so. <laughs> make it so. <laughs> yes, make it so. Bernice had a couple of questions. Um, and then we'll and then we'll go to Melissa because she's got one too. So you wanted to know about go ahead, Bernice. You can ask your own questions. <laughs> you're back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh when you're in some of these dwellings, do you just feel the spirit of the, the formerly enslaved? You know, the, I, I'm sure the spirit is there. I, 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 I don't, uh, I don't invite them. <laughs> um, and, 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 and here's why. You know, um, I, I know I've got to, I got to be prepared to move on to the next place, and uh, communing, if possible. Uh, although they, they know my intentions are good. Um, I, I don't know if I can if I could handle that. So I'm, mm -hmm. so I'm in denial. You know, some folks, some folks say, you know, I'm, I should let them in, but I, I know, but I've, I've been at this for, for 10 years and, and, and I don't go seeking their, their wisdom or, or whatever they would, uh, um, you know, mm -hmm. bestow on me or, 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 or say to me, I, I don't go seeking that. Um, because uh, again, I don't want to, I don't want to be on a mindset that I'm upset. They lived a life that no one should have endured. And I, I, to try to, to, to get into their psyche or, or to try to get them in mind, I, 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 want, I don't want to burden myself with that. I just want to keep on doing what I'm doing in the manner that I'm doing. And it's to keep my head in a place where I, could, I can go to the next place and, oh, yeah. and, and duplicate what I've, what I've done in the previous places. That's, that's, just, that's just my goal. That, make, that makes also, sense. When you have been in any of these dwellings, have you found fingerprints, thumbprints? Oh yeah, the fingerprints and the bricks. Yeah. So, so one, you know, one thing that I've learned, and I, I, I hope I would have known this going in, you know, ten years ago, but more recently, uh, the bricks that were made that that are now these dwellings or the big house for that matter any building on the property the bricks that were made were were made by enslaved people and in the process of making bricks when they're still kind of pliable when when, when mm -hmm. they're soft enough and you have to flip them over to uh, you know take them out of that mold and flip it over for the other other side of the brick to dry or you may pick that brick up too too early before it's dry sometimes you left fingerprints in those bricks so what i do when i go to these places i look for fingerprints so some you know i i might be you and i might be walking side by side and then all of a sudden you walking by yourself and you turn around <laughs> you see i'm looking up i'm looking at a brick wall uh and, and that's and, and, and that's what i'm doing i'm just attracted to these yeah. bricks now and yeah it, because the fingerprints are there and i think mm -hmm. it's it's our ancestors reaching back saying you know we were here mm -hmm. tell our stories and here's the evidence of us right here so yeah i look for those fingerprints now and joe just so you know you've got me doing that <laughs> i had to spend a couple of weeks in, in charleston when my father was sick and everywhere i went i would stop <laughs> and look on these walls and my kids would be going what are you doing so every time we go someplace that's a historical site that has brick i'm always looking for the fingerprints or getting them to help me look so yeah it, it, and it now, is an overwhelming feeling when you feel it it's it's when now, you see now you got, yeah now you got to go a step further you got to take pictures now. yes yes absolutely and post them absolutely i'm not as good as you though i don't find them as quickly as you do <laughs> so I've got well, to... yeah don't get up yeah don't get obsessed <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, the one photograph that you have on the Facebook page is, is really, it's mm -hmm. a gorgeous photograph with mm -hmm. the, your, your hand, I assume it's yours, uh -huh. with the fingerprints. Yeah. That's, that's a beautiful, yeah, that is, it it's is. a beautiful shot. Well, Melissa, you've got a question. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering, um, Joe, if there was any slave dwellings that you've wanted to stay at, but for some reason, rules or whatever, they weren't allowed to. Well, ultimately, I want to I want to stay in the White House because, <laughs> of course, again, twelve of our former uh, yeah. presidents were uh, were slave owners, and and some of those presidents enslaved people while they were in office. So it's you know justifiably, 
uh, there's a space in there that would be appropriate mm -hmm. for, for, for me to sleep. Um, but that window might be closed right now for the next few months or so. Um, but, but when that opportunity presents itself again, I would love to, to sleep in the White House. Um, now we've made a formal request to the new museum in uh, Washington, DC. At the time that we made the request, they, they came back with a no. But you know they were all new and shiny back then, and 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 their uh, their um, attendance was very high. I, I I assume that might still be the case, but I'm sure that that number is is probably working its way down. So I know there's going to be some point where they're going to be, you know, maybe encourage or, or reach out to me, uh, you know, to come and spend mm -hmm. the night in there. I'm I'm just waiting for that to happen. Um, you know, there have been uh, uh, cases where I got an initial no. Uh, you know, very early on, and, and, and some some institutions or some sites have come back later uh, after I had built that track record uh, to let folks uh, know that I come in peace, I mean uh -huh, no harm, uh -huh. um, and they have come back around, and I have have stayed in those places. Now, one of the most exciting places that I will stay this year, um, if science permits, we've already postponed it twice, um, <laughs> but it's going to be the uh, Virginia Governor's Mansion. Um, oh, the wow. current governor yeah the controversial one him um he's we, okay uh, yeah he's okay i'm, I'm sure he's, I'm, he's good with me i'm good but you know there's a there's a checkered a black and white pass if you will um so um I, i'm going to stay there um and i'm really i'm really looking forward to that and i always look also forward to adding new states to the uh to the portfolio this year we were supposed to add michigan they're again, in Michigan. Um, with Dearborn, Dear Dearborn? Yes. Oh, Dearborn. Dearborn. Yeah. Dearborn. Henry Ford. Yeah. Henry Ford. That, yes. thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. where. Yeah. Um, because, you know, he's got some historical buildings there. However, um, you know, when, you know, before that big sale, you know, Louisiana Purchase, um, the, uh, the French were quite prominent in Michigan, and they were enslaving people. So, you know, that justifies that, uh, that uh -huh. state also. So we were going to add Michigan this year. Michi Michigan was going to be our 26th state. And we were also going to add um, Natchez, Mississippi. Uh -huh. Now, the reason I'm excited about Natchez, Mississippi is because, you know, if you want a hoop skirt, mint julep version of the story, <laughs> go to Natchez, Mississippi. Yeah. Because they'll 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 give it to you, they'll sell it to you, they'll I mean they'll <laughs> they'll, they'll take it to the next level. Um, so I, we finally cracked that nut, and and we were supposed to uh, we were supposed to do that this past April, but again we're in a holding pattern. Hmm. Right. Uh, of course, with that yes. Why? I'll come up to Michigan if you do. I was going to say you've got some Michigan yeah. people on this panel, yeah. so they'll yeah. have to come and join you. I'm that, Michigan and Virginia. Yeah, if that goes. But Joe's going to ask you why? Why do you think people say no? Do you think they have some kind of fear of something untoward happening because somebody, you know, brought to media attention that there were slave dwellings on the property, or do they just want to keep it quiet? Why? Why do you think people say no? Well, you know, um, I don't get a lot of I don't get a lot of no's right now. And, and, you know, the reason the reason why I don't get a lot of no's now is because either we're doing a repeat stay or people are calling us yeah. to fill in the rest. That's so great. So it's it's not it's it's not me or the slave dwelling project reaching out reaching out to, to them anymore. That's great. Um, so those no's have minimized. Now it it took it took me a while. I've stayed at uh, Mount Vernon, but it took years. It took years for that to happen. From 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 the from the time the first request was made to the time the stay actually happened, it was it was five years. But mm -hmm. but again, it, it's that it, it's that stick to itiveness. It's it's knowing that this this project has legs and mm -hmm. and it's it's a legitimate project. And see, that's um, and I was I was asked the question about uh, the spirits, and I know spirits are different from ghosts. I, I, we try to keep those things separated. But I know that uh, 10 years ago when I started, I used to get these calls from these ghost hunting outfits. Oh, gosh. I had to tell them, I had to, had to, tell them to go away yeah. quickly because this project was not about that. Right. And because, and, and because I, I stuck by that, mm -hmm. you know, we're still around. And, and it's like I just said, we, we, get these, uh, we get these yeses now. But let's go back to the no's. Okay. The first no that I got was from uh, the, the state of South Carolina, um, Redcliffe. 
plantation in Aiken County, yeah. South Carolina. Now they have come back around and I have had that stay because yeah. they called me after, you know, after I had established myself for two years and knew, they knew that uh, I came in peace, I, I meant no harm. So they called me and, and we made it happen, it, it happened. Um, other no's that, I, that, that I've gotten along the way that, that just hasn't happened. I, I told you about uh, the, the one in the Smithsonian uh, Museum. Uh, that's, uh, I got uh, this good feeling that it's gonna come back around. Um, now I got, a, I got a half no. Last time I went to, <laughs> last time I went to uh, uh, New Orleans. When, when I went to New Orleans, we were supposed to sleep at the uh, Beauregard Kai's house, Beauregard Kai's. Now, PGT Beauregard, Pierre Gustave Dutamp Beauregard, he was that, uh, that uh, the gentleman who ordered the first shot uh, onto Fort Sumter, um, oh, that Beauregard. That so he one. lived in, he lived in New Orleans and, and then he lived in this house that uh, uh, the gentleman who lived there before him was an auctioneer. So this man auctioned people, enslaved people. So I was, I was really looking forward to staying in that place because I was like killing two birds with one stone. <laughs> you know? Uh, a per person who sold people, yes. a person who who ordered the first shot on the Civil War, but but what happened? They were have they were having construction mm. at the site, so we didn't do the sleepover. But we had we had a conversation. Right. We had a conversation around a campfire, and that conversation got real heated because there was a gentleman there uh, when we talked about uh, uh, free labor. Well, he wasn't looking at free labor from the sense that the, the people doing the work weren't getting paid. He was looking at it from the angle that, you know, that's this enslaver had paid for these people and they were his property and he was keeping them uh, uh, fed and, 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 and sheltered. Well, he said, for that reason, it wasn't free labor. Well, the rest, the rest of the people in the audience weren't feeling that. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and I'll bet. This, this, <laughs> this, not that the gentleman was wrong, but he was just, his timing was off. Um, and it was, it got, almost got combative. Oh gosh. Um, yeah. but you know, it was New Orleans. There was some drinking involved. So, hey. <laughs> um, but we, Bernice's folks. That is Bernice's <laughs> folks. Yeah. As a matter of fact, she asked if, uh, you've ever stayed at the Hermitage. The uh, Hermitage. No, that's, oh, that's Melissa. Oh, never mind. That's, I thought that was Bernice. Uh, Melissa wanted to know if yeah. you'd ever stayed. Go ahead, Melissa. Yeah, I live in Tennessee and I actually live only about 20 minutes away from Battle of Fort Donaldson. But um, I know that the Hermages have, have got some slave dwellings there. I wondered if you'd stayed there. Right. Yeah. The first uh, presidential site that I stayed uh, was the Hermitage in, of course, Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, the first night, yeah, well, both nights I stayed, I stayed with people. Um, it was not alone. I remember the lightning bugs. Yeah. I, I, I remember the, I remember the turkeys in the trees. Mm -hmm. uh, ah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that, that was, that was uh, quite a, quite an interesting stay, staying at a, uh, a home of uh, one of our former presidents. Not was, not only was he a, uh, one of our former presidents, you know, he was a president known for the Trail of Tears. Mm, so right, that kind right. of brought, uh, you know, another element, oh, sure. another element yeah. to the, um, uh, uh, to the sleepover also. Oh, thank well, you. Well, you know that, sorry, Mills, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, you know, Joe, that I have been trying to get that plantation spring bank <laughs> in Williamsburg County <laughs> to have us go. Uh, it was so funny because the first time I met you, I told you about spring bank and you grew up in Williamsburg County and went, I didn't even, didn't even click to me that I used to be a plantation. Um, nuns, nuns own it now. And so it's a retreat. And I think that's part of why they haven't really responded back. Maybe they're, but I'll keep working on it. We'll get there. Okay. Yeah, you know, you're right. You know, I, we used to go there often. We, um, uh, you know, I was a, I, I grew up as Catholic, and mm -hmm. uh, and and that was a, as you said, a, a Catholic property. It still yeah. is. Yeah. And and I I would go there often. You know, I guess I gotta I gotta if I could think that far back, maybe I fell asleep there. I mean, took a nap there, <laughs> and if that if I did, that counts. But I I kind of doubt it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get there. We will. We will get there. So I'll, yeah. keep, I'll keep working on them. Dan, you had a question. Yeah. So, so you've been doing this for for ten years. 
um, how, how has staying in these dwellings changed you as, as a person? Um, how's it, how's it changed you and, and your outlook on things? Well, it, it has made me love my ancestors more because they, 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 they went through hell. Um, you know, for those who died in old age, of old age, uh, and, and, lo and lots of them did, you know, I, I admire them. But the, for those who died the uh, tragic death, I admire them too. I admire them all because, you know, they, they, it, it's because of them, you know, I'm, I'm here right now. Um, I, I had, uh, I, I, I entertain or entertain, that's the wrong word. I, I disseminate information to youth groups often. And sometimes I, I, I see young uh, African American males, and 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 they'll they'll talk a good game, you know, something like, "Well, I, I wouldn't have been a slave, you know, I I would have <laughs> I would have revolted." And I have to tell them, I said, "Yeah, maybe once, and your gene pool would have been eliminated." I said, "If if oh. if if your if your if your ancestors talk that talk that you're talking right now, you wouldn't be here." Um, so that 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 kind of makes it makes it real to them. It, it's kind of, it, it's, it's kind of like that time when I, when I had my aha moment and, and, and went into that space that made me realize that saving uh, spaces uh, was important. And it was that time I went into um, uh, where Anne Frank hid from, uh, hid from the Germans in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. And I went into that space and then I got it. I, I finally realized what my teacher was trying to teach me, you know, at that younger age, sitting in that classroom, being that the, the knucklehead that I was, I knew I was. Um, but when I went into that space, it it it, it all it all wow. came back to me to to be there. So that's what that's when I knew that, you know, saving spaces is, is important. You know, although the things associated with this space is not all good. They still need to be here. They still need to be here on this earth. And that's the kind of, that's been driving me, you know, for, for these last 10 years. You know, these spaces, are, are some bad things happen in these spaces. Good things happen in those spaces too, because th these people woke up the next day and, and, and they, they endured. Although they, they endured a, a rough life, they still endured. Uh, and and it, is, it has allowed us to, to be here. And it, it has allowed us to to be a nation of uh, of, of a huddled mass. As long as, as as we allow this huddled mass to be the huddled mass and quit trying to suppress those efforts, but that's another story. <laughs> Mary, you had a, a question, or um, yeah, a question about yeah, the I had a question. Um, there's the, a slave diary project that I have used in some of my social history talks that I give. Um, that was a world WP, WPA project. And I'm just wondering if any of the places that you've stayed, you have, whether you've correlated anything from the, that diary project with some of the places that you've stayed? Well, um, no, <clears throat> no, but here's what, but, but here's what we are doing. Uh, um, I'm in the process of co-writing a book uh, about, about the project, and we're using those narratives. We're pulling those uh, ah. those excerpts uh, from the narrative, and whatever applies to uh, some of the places I've been, we're we're, we're making those references to the ah. to the slave narratives. Yeah, that's nice, great. Nice. That'd be great. Nice. Oh, can't wait for that to come out. Yeah. 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 Get working. Get writing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I knew that was coming. <laughs> we want a copy. <laughs> and then you get to come back and talk they about, talk the, about book. the book. Right. Absolutely. Now, I'm in. A, yeah, a couple of people have asked about um, supporting the project and we will have a link to the website on the website you can go and see that you can make donations to help right. with the project you have a conference that's supposed to be <laughs> that's supposed to be once a once a year but you know unfortunately in this era of covid that got that got canceled are you going to do anything virtual with that or is it just canceled for this year it's canceled for this year we talked yeah. about a, a virtual uh program or, or conference, we mm -hmm. kick that around. But our funder, uh, 1772 Foundation, has allowed us to take a deferment. And oh, we're going to we're going to do it. Uh, we're still going to do it. Uh, 2021, uh, we started out uh, negotiations with Clemson University. Right, we were right. going to do it there. Those yeah. uh, that, that's still available. That's still on the table. 
great. That's, that's what we're going to do. But yes, we are going to have that conference, uh, that uh, next slave dwelling project conference. And, uh, and at every conference, genealogy is always a track that we uh, mm -hmm. that we pursue. And I'm hoping that uh, all the faces that I see here right now will <laughs> be, uh, be there either presenting or in the audience. That would be fabulous. We will keep, we will keep an eye on that and, and, uh, and uh, see when the registration comes up and, and everything that you need for that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward. I was excited to see that it was going to be in Clemson, but this year, nobody's been able to get to do much of anything, have we? <laughs> so hopefully, yeah. hopefully next year, but we will put the link for all that, your, your shirts that you sell, all of that oh, goes yeah. to help fund the project. And like I said, join the Facebook group because Joe's been doing a wonderful, wonderful job of, uh, letting us in on his on his sleepovers now i know that there was a question in here um from oh bernice about safety and then shelly's got a question go ahead bernice you had a question about his safety do you want me to just read it or are you <coughs> okay um she wanted to know if you've ever felt um you know unsafe or you know as you were sleeping now i remember that one in magnolia those little armadillos were running underneath and making yeah, all that noise <laughs> Armadillos, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, until I found out what armadillo, well, I always knew what they were, but but until I found out that there were armadillos making a noise where I was at that time, you know, I was frightened. But but that's not the case anymore. I know what they are. What they but are. as far as my my safety is concerned, now now today, um, uh, on a on a serious note, uh, you know, in California they found two guys hanging from trees. And, and 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 that's that's you know that is quite serious mm -hmm. you know we we've had um uh, uh people are kind of on the edge yeah. right now with with, yeah. with what's going on we we've had the the, the uh in my what i defy what i define as a a lynching that that went on for eight minutes and 46 seconds you know uh, my definition of, of of a lynching is being the judge jury and the executioner and and I saw I saw that carried out in in eight minutes and in, in forty six seconds. I saw a man who was pursued uh, like an animal, and 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 his life was was snuffed out. Um, so you know those things those things are are happening. Um, now you know I, I'm not going to retreat uh, because of all that's going on. I know, I know there's potential there that those mm -hmm. things can can take place. Uh, you know I'm I'm going to be sleeping at a place Friday night. I'm going to be sleeping at a place uh, uh, a week from from Friday night. Uh, and, and those uh, those things run through my mind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping that these site managers are, are as aware as I am. <clears throat> I'm certain that they are. Um, they know the threat levels to mm -hmm. to to their places. So we know all that's in the discussion. Uh, and you know, if I if I if I don't feel safe at a place, uh, you know, between now and <clears throat> the time that the event actually happens, you know, I can back out. Right. Um, but so far, that's not the case. <clears throat> right. um, next month, another aspect of safety that I need to think about is uh, I'm going to start flying again. You know, I'm going to to Lynchburg, Virginia, so, and I haven't flown since since mid February, and we mm -hmm. and we know all the. Um, the, the the possibilities there the unknowns and the knowns mm -hmm. uh, that 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 are possibilities uh but uh i will be flying again uh, next month we're going to lynchburg virginia you know the home of mr falwell uh liberty university mm -hmm. uh you know there there the, there are very uh hot topics being discussed uh there right now uh, we're, we're hoping to engage whatever audience we can muster you know in in any subject matter that's mm -hmm. going to be pertinent that that needs to be talked about because in these conversations that that we had prior to uh prior to the virus as i said we we don't hold back you know we don't sugarcoat uh we, we talk about race relations all those folks sitting around that campfire usually always always some are descendants of slave owners and 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 they put it out there you know one conversation we had uh, at Magnolia Plantation and Gardens, one young lady revealed that her father was a member of the KKK. And, uh, you know, he was suffering from Parkinson's disease at the time. I don't even know if he's still on this earth, but she talked about that. We had a conversation uh, at uh, Middletown, Virginia at uh, Bell Grove 
plantation. One young lady uh, told us that her brother was mim mimicking the actions of Dylan Roof. You know, and Dylan Roof oh. is that young man who went into that church and, yes. and snuffed, out, snuffed out nine lives. Mm -hmm. So we have these kinds of, of conversations uh, around these campfire. And I'm hoping that we're going to continue right. uh, to have these, these kinds of conversations. Um, I know that when the last time I, I, I slept uh, in a space, it was uh, the Aiken Red House right here in Charleston, South Carolina. I stayed, mm -hmm. there, I stayed there on a Friday night. And that next night, they were rioting. Yes. Uh, and, and looting, uh, you know, uh, yes. in, in the city. So I, I know that there's, there's danger there. There are threats out there. People are on edge. Mm -hmm. um, so, but with that, I, I still go out and, and do what I do. Um, I, you know, let a lot, a lot of folks know where I am. Uh, you know, if I, don't, <laughs> if, I don't, if I don't return, if I'm not back, if I don't check yeah. in, yeah. you know, right. send, send something. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and it's important to know when you're doing these Facebook Lives, because you can't have people with you, you are by yourself. You were, you right. were by yourself, and, and you, you check in, you come on, you know, but you got all night when you're not checking in. Yeah. So, and well, you're sleeping, and you got your little sleeping bag, and your little lamp, and you <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah. But, but the last sleep I over I did, the biggest threat were mosquitoes. Yes. They, they, won, the, they won the night. I, yes. I, uh, I, they won. I had to. They will do that. Yeah. Yes. I had to tap out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they certainly, certainly will. So, um, I, I am grateful for this, this program that you're doing, Shelley. You had, you had a. Yeah, I had one question. Yeah. Just, just kind of summing this up. Any yeah. of the plantations that you have been to, are there plantations where your ancestors would have been enslaved at? No, highly, highly likely no. Um, okay. But I got to, you know, when we do that Spring Bank thing mm -hmm. uh, in King Street, that, that will yeah. probably be um, a, a strong possibility. However, I have stayed at some in Georgetown, which are, you know, mm -hmm. maybe, uh, you know, yeah. I've stayed at Hobcar Barony. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's a possibility, possibility. there. Um, but, but for certain, I, I don't have that concrete evidence, no. Okay. Yeah. And the last thing was, where do you hope you're in 10 years, how long you are gonna keep going and what is the ultimate hope of what you are doing that you wanna see come out of it? Well, we, we've already established, we've been a, a 501c3 uh, organization since 2013. So, mm -hmm. so that we're already kind of laying the, the groundwork for this project to uh, be here beyond my existence. So, so that's a great thing. Now, as far as me, uh, in, 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 in me physically and what I, what I want to do with this, I, you know, I want to sleep in a slave dwelling as long as this body will allow me to, <laughs> you know, if that's, if that's 10 years from now, then I, yeah, I still want to be doing that, but, but no longer than that. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so, so some, sometime between now and now in 10 years, you know, uh, I don't know if I've, I've peaked yet. I, I personally don't think I have, um, and I, I hope not to for you know for years to come. But um, I, you know, when that time comes, you just gotta just gotta succumb or, or acquiesce and, and, and accept life, <laughs> what life gives you. Uh, but but I'm not there yet. I'm, I'm, I think I still got a lot of pep, a lot of vigor, and uh, I want to still put that to use to uh, continuing to uh, honor the enslaved ancestors in the manner that I do. And I'm hoping that at some point, if, if you guys, any of you on the screen haven't had that experience yet, you got it. You got to join me. Yeah. Yep. On my bucket list. <laughs> right. Even, even okay. if it's got to be before spring bank, I don't care. I, at some point, you know, we may, it may take us a little longer on spring bank, but so once things open up, maybe back down at Magnolia or something again, but anyway. Thank you. Oh yeah, I've, yeah. I've got yeah. To, I've got the keys to that place. We can yeah, do you that do. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been fabulous. So much great information, and I'm hoping that we'll get a lot of viewers who will feel inspired to to help with this project and uh, maybe send a little bit of that money along the way, or <laughs> buy some T-shirts, or yeah. or. <laughs> Buy some t-shirts and, and help keep this, this uh, project going because I know your, your goal is to help change the narrative, you know, to, exactly. to help us understand because I know, I know it's been helpful for me as the daughter of 
um, I should say, descendant of uh, slaveholders, that it has really been a powerful experience for me to watch what you do. And then as I go and visit these places, walk through and think, oh my goodness, look for those fingerprints, think about who who built these places. And it's it's really changed me. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you being here tonight. And, and with that, we're going to have to say bye, everybody. Thanks for watching, Jen, friends. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thanks, Joe. You're welcome.